Today we want to learn from a man called Paul. Our topic is be rooted and grounded in God's love. When you are grounded in the love in the love of God, what kind of Christian are you? If you are grounded with the things of God, you are grounded with the love, only that love, the love of God, which we know how God loves me and you, then we'll be grounded with the word of God for us to know what is in the Bible so that we can know what to do. You will be a blessing because wherever you go, you have peace. You know what to do. But there are times when we go out, we change like a chameleon. When we come to the church, we have a different way. And when we go outside there, there are different ways that we are behaving. But when you are grounded in the word of God, wherever you go, you are the same. You don't want to change. You are the same. You do things that God wants you to do. You behave the way that is, if I behave this way, I am just, I am. When you go out, think that your out and in must be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are reading, we are getting our reading from Ephesians 3, 14 to 19. Ephesians 3, 14 to 19. I want someone to read it for us. And I'm given this responsibility to Cherno Bangura to read for us this in Jesus' name. Because I know he is remembering everything that we are saying here. <laughs> Three. Grasping the greatness of this plan by which Jews and Gentiles are joined together in Christ. I bow my knees in reverence before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 15, 15 verse 15. From whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. God, the first and ultimate Father. Continues. Verse 16, may he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self. That is the indwelling your innermost being and personality. Verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith and may you, in having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints, that is God's people, the width and length and height and depth of his love, fully experiencing that amazing love, and that you may come to know practically through personal experience the love of Christ which far surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you also. So this vision... Today we want to learn from Paul, a man called Paul, whom we all know, who got this vision for the salvation of the Gentiles. Today I'm removing the Gentiles. Paul got this vision for you and me. If you go back, we are going back to Ephesians 2.8, so that you people will know what I'm talking today. Ephesians 2.8. Ephesians 2, IT. For it is by grace, first remarkable co compassion and favor drawing you to Christ, that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life. 
through faith and this salvation is not of yourself not through your own effort but it is on the on the deserved gracious uh, undeserved gracious gift of god amen all that today we are coming to talk is about me and you how we were in those days we know the jews the jews we are the people that they they i cannot say they take themselves even god god uh, uh, accept these jews but with the gentiles who we are not accepted who we are not worshiping god amen who we are not in the book of god i can say because if you right now you are a christian and those people outside there who are not worshiping god you are not the same don't take don't don't confuse those people outside there they are the children of god as how you are the children of god but they are not worshiping god so we the gentiles we remove the, the church of ephesus this morning so the gentiles in those days they were not worshiping god so god gave this responsibility to a man called paul a man called paul whom you know he was once the person who was killing the christians he was once the person who is doing the things that a, a christian is not doing right now god turned things around he accelerated paul the same way god will accelerate you this morning in every ugly thing that you are doing in jesus name and he gave him that responsibility to talk to the, Jew, the, the, the Gentiles. You understand me. I'm not preaching. I just want you to get this small area. You understand it. He gave this responsibility to Paul, God himself. He gave this responsibility so that these, children, these people will know God. They know God, but they, we are not worshiping God. There is no one who did not know that there is a God. It's only for them to worship God. It's only for them to accept God. There is somebody who is telling me. He said, Rosalyn, at any time you come in this office, the first thing is bow down and talk to He said you are talking to God. Which God you are talking to? If you are talking to God, why are you here? God is supposed to pay you. I said, no. God is paying me because he allowed me to come and work. He gave me the life. He gave me the good health for me to come and be in this office. That is why I am here. It is God and not you. The child is just laughing because he is, he is 21. It's a child for me. I said, no, one day may God convict you that you will know who is God. The, the people, they actually know, but they don't want to worship God. Even now they are here in the world. They know there is a God. Just like Satan. Satan knew the Bible more than you and me. But he did not want to submit to God again in Jesus' name. So they gave this responsibility to, to Paul. And Paul declared in, that, in, in 2.18 that God gave him the grace to preach to the Gentiles to, to gain salvation. Why? Why God gave him this grace to preach the, 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 the word of God to them so that they can get this salvation? Why? I know you have the answer. But allow me to give you this answer in Jesus' name. Because the Gentiles, we are not worshiping God as I was saying. We are not worshiping God at that time. They we are living in sin without hope. They we are not worshiping the God that we are worshiping today. They we are just living in sin. If you read the Old Testament and the other, all other areas, you will know how in those days people we are, people we are living. Only the grace of God and the dead that he decided to give his son Jesus Christ to come and die for you and me today we are free in Jesus name I see please project Ephesians 2 11, 11 to 12 so that we can see for ourselves not for me Alice Ephesians 2, 11 to 12. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Remember that at that time, you were separated from Christ, excluding from any relationship with him, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promises with no shares in the sacred messianic promises and without knowledge of God's agreement, having no hope in his promises and living in the world without God. Amen. So we are living in the world without God. The Israelites, they don't, don't, no one recognized we in those days, they recognized the Jews. But because of the, 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 the blessing, the love our God has for us, we receive our Jesus who died in that cross. Save this Paul who is responsible, who was responsible to take this message to Ephesus, in a church, a church in Ephesus. Paul opened this church. He was going around. If you read in the book of Acts about this man I am talking, how he suffered because he decided to give himself to God. He made a decision that I am living whatever I'm, I was doing. God brought him. He was going to Damascus. Here he got his, his, his salvation. You can get your salvation, then you decided to live. You said, God has saved me. But what I am seeing myself as if I am young. I am going to enjoy myself. But when God, uh, Paul got the salvation, he did not go back again. He stands still and worship God. He stands still and teach other people. You can see in, the, in our Bible, Paul is the greatest writer in the Bible. Above all the other people who wrote in that Bible, God, uh, Paul was the one who, I don't see any other person like Paul, who wrote that Bible. Amen? Don't go back again. God has already exhilarated you. God has removed you from where you were. We are not worshiping God. He sent Jesus. Go and die for these people. Go and die for their sins so that they can be like the Jews. So we became one. We are all one today. Is it true that you are doing the right thing that God wants you to do? <coughs> Is it true that you are not behind again? Are you trying to forge ahead? Live. Worship God. Knowing God and doing what he wants us to do is a, a two different thing. Because you know me, I'm standing here. I don't know the inner part. You don't know me how I behave. No. How can we do that? We dig into the Bible. Go into the Bible this morning. Make that Bible your friend. So that you can know about God. These this Gentiles, they were not worshipping God. But when, when you decided to do something... Do it as unto the Lord. You are here seated in a church. Don't believe that. Don't behave like those other people outside there again in Jesus' name. Our God has exhilarated us. The Jews refused to associate themselves with, with us in those days. They were cast out and void of God's mass. They did not associate with us. They said, no, these are the Gentiles. They don't want us. But someone labored for you this morning to accelerate you. Acceleration is not, it's not about always we are expecting when we say this year, God will lift us up, God will, give, uh, uh, God will take us to, to, to a higher heart. Some of us, we are thinking in our working place, we will have promotion. It's true. This year, they will promote you in Jesus' name. But what I'm saying, think about there tomorrow. Here is for here. Is for this world. There is no, there is no one who will live. A few days ago, my daughter told me, Mommy, you see that old guy who was preaching and I'm always thinking about my father. I love that man. They said he's dead. I said, oh God. I said, how old? He said, Mommy, it's 90 years. I said, my God, you won't live. If, if the youth, you are sitting here, you will old and die. When you die, there is the everlasting world. The everlasting world we are in, you cannot come here again. You cannot go to the north. You cannot go to the south. You live in the hands of God. Where would you like to be? Would, are you choosing the, 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 how do you call it, to be in hell for the rest of your life? 
make up your mind. Do your best for you to have the peace. There is everything in heaven. So the Bible said, everything in heaven you want, you will get it in Jesus' name. Why? Let us strive. Let us push forward so that we can meet the mark of the high calling in Jesus' name. In verse 14, Paul says of, of the humility of God. Can, you, in, can somebody read for me from another Bible, even the good news, so that we can understand something from verse 14. Ephesians verse 14. Ephesians 3. Yes, 3, 14. Amen. Amen. Paul bowed down for you and me. Paul is praying to God to save us. But he was not praying, standing up. He was not praying, bending this way. He was not praying. If someone prayed, then you see that person bow down. You will know that person is concentrating. Amen. Paul decided to bow down to God to pray for you and me. My question this morning in this area, how many souls have you been praying for? Do you have people in your mind that you are praying for them all the time? As how Paul was praying for we, to God to accelerate us, to God to give us that divine growth, some of us, some of the pastors, some of the elders, some of the deacons, some of the, the departmental others, and some of the church members in any church, we are selfish. We don't want to pray for another person. Thinking that when I open my mouth, I pray for the person, God will bless him. If God blesses the person, bravo to you, you will get that blessing again in Jesus' name. Paul was praying for you and me in verse 14. He bowed down. As you heard when Elsa was, Elder was reading. Train humility by bowing before God. For he knew that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Philippians 2.10 says that. Every knee should, in, and also in the book of Romans 14.11, but you read it in your house later. Even when Paul was talking to, to the elders, he was coming from a, 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 a place called Mirutius. Pastor, am I correct? Pastors who are here. Mirutius. He was passing to go to Jerusalem. He called the elders from, from uh, 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 Ephesus. He said he want to talk to them. When Paul was talking to them, he said, maybe this would be the last time that you will see me again. People were crying. He was buying that. Hey, 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 hey. calling upon the name of God for them. But today we don't heed respect to our prayers. Some of us, we are eating, we pray. We are eating. We do anything. In this country, you can't blame people if people are working. If we don't work, you won't get the money to pay for the rent. It is through our works, God is blessing us. But please, besides that, when you are praying, know that you are talking to the Most High God. The master who owns your life. Paul bowed down to pray for you and me so that God can accelerate us. He will remove us from that area where we are and bring us to the body of Christ. When you are in the body of Christ, no enemy will succeed over you in Jesus' name. If you are in the body of Christ and the enemies are fluctuating every day, then you are receiving them. It means you, are, you haven't prayed yet. You are the weak Christian. Satan cannot fight with Jesus. You have Jesus. You have Jesus. When you are praying, show God that you are praying to God. And 
uh, uh, Paul was praying in this area in the name of, in three occasions. If you read in uh, Philippians 2.10, Romans 14.11, and Act 20, 36 to 38, you, you will know what uh, uh, Mrs. Makoti is talking in Jesus' name. Paul kneeled down to, to, to show his respect to God, to show honor and reverence to God. He know he is the father. He exalts God, showing that he did, not, he did not merit it. The position God has given to him, he did not merit it. Only God. So he bowed down to worship God in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, my, my brothers and sisters, if you want to worship God, bow down so that God will know, or you be in the attitude of prayer, so that God will know that this person who is talking to me has honor for me in Jesus' name. Let us look at the details of the prayer to see how Paul, the prayer that uh, Paul was praying. Let us look at these details. It's from the book, the same book, 16, 17, and 18. There we will stop this morning. But let's look at this prayer so that we can see how this man was removing us from our sins. Bringing us in the body of Christ, who only God can do it for us in Jesus' name. I think you can project verse 16 or elder, you can read it for us in Jesus' name. The same Ephesians 3, chapter 16 now. We want to see the prayer Paul was offering for us. Amen. Verse 16. Yes, we are dealing with 16 right now. Paul was praying for you and me so that we can receive power and we can receive strength. So we don't be that weak Christians in Jesus' name. Paul was praying for you and me that we will receive power. He prayed that the Gentiles may have strength and power through the Holy Spirit to resist the temptation. The trials of this world, to be able to pursue peace. Church, there is no giant Christian. I'm always saying that. No giant Christian. No giant man of God. No giant pastors. The enemy, they go in today for the pastors. The enemy go in too much today for the pastor's children. They go in today for the pastor's wives. If you are an elder, you are a leader, Satan is saying, Oh, you, you are showing as if you know God. I will come and reduce you. I will do something in your family that the whole world will doubt you in Jesus' name. The whole world will doubt you. That is the power that Satan has. No giant Christian in this world. If you don't pray, temptation are around you. You have to pray so that all the trials, the temptation, and everything that Satan is purported for you will remove through prayers in Jesus' name. Only when you pray, you will see the hand of God. If I am a mother, you have to ask me for lunch. Then you feel proud to ask me for your lunch. You feel proud you are a wife. You are in Africa. The husband has to give us how do you call it chop money? The husband has to put the money on the table. Then you don't ask. You don't show humility. You don't trouble yourself. Early in the morning, I will go to work without leaving that money. But when you ask me, I know my responsibility. But you have to ask. When you ask, it will show a sign of respect in Jesus' name. Just that sign of respect. We have nothing. We have no so that We respect him. We know that we have a God. We reverence him. That this is our God. He is doing this for us. This is the one who sent Jesus to remove us from this dungeon. To remove us from this dirty game. To remove us from where we are. We are not worshiping God. It is only God who can do it for you. Why can't you reverence him? Why can't you respect him? Pray all the time. No giant Christian. Don't think that because you are a pastor, you are an elder, Satan will not come to you. They come to us more than any other person. 
in Jesus' name. Because Satan is seeing you and me calling God all the time. So those are the people Satan wants. In Jesus' name. So uh, uh, Paul was praying for you and me so that we have that strength. We have that power to pray, to remove us from the small, small uh, 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 gods that our ancestors were worshipping. Paul did this for you and me. 17, Papa. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 When Christ in do well in us, if Christ in do well in you, to empower us to do everything in the name of God, if he is in you, when this is, this, oh my God, if Christ is in you, you will see, you will want to do, you, you, you will look at people outside there, they are doing, even the children who follow these bad people nowadays, it is because that Christ hasn't been in them completely yet. But when Christ is in you, there is nothing in this world that can entice you for anything in Jesus' name. Even dressings that you will, you will see them, you say, well, what is this? Because all what you want to do is worshiping your God, knowing your God, reading your Bible, and all the rest. But when Christ is not, hasn't dwelled in you yet, there are many things that you want to do. Today you'll be thinking of going to Sydney. I want to go to Sydney. That, that football today, that, that uh, 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 so many activities. You, you, uh, and it is not bad to go to those activities. It is only what are you going to do? Are you, because I can be a, 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 a man of God, I went there to just evangelize. For people to know that, it is not because you are a pastor, you cannot be among those people. But you will know how you live there. For some, they are going there to do what? To smoke what they call, how do you call it? Kif or kush? I don't know. They will. <laughs> Anyone now? They did not go there to live a fine life. So when you, you God has already in dwell in you. You are free from so many things. To obey his word, the Holy Spirit will guide you when God dwell in you. That Holy Spirit, he will guide you. He will direct us in all our activities and decision making in Jesus' name. Is it not wonderful for you to have someone who is directing you, who guides you, who shows you what to do? Your husband cannot do that for you. Your wife cannot do that. We the wives, if even our husbands want to direct us, we said no, here is 50-50 now. You are working in the disability. I'm also working in the disability. If they pay you one five, they pay me one five. We we'll look puff and off. So they stop guiding us. At times they hesitate to tell us the truth. Because of the way we are. And we are not like that in Africa. But when we jump to, the, to this other world, we change completely from them in Jesus' name. We change. This is not Jesus' name, in fact. We change completely. <laughs> so, if you have that God who guides you, people want this God that we are serving. But because of the ignorance, they cannot. They haven't come yet. We pray that they will come so that they taste the sweetness that we are enjoying in Jesus' name. In verse 18, Daddy, yes? Mm-hmm. 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 May be able to comfort whom? Us. Not? This will help us understand the love of God, which he said is long. The love of God is long. It has no area to stop. No area, the love of God. It has no area to stop in Jesus' name. The love of God is wide. It's deep and high. I wish I know that song. The love of God 
we have nothing. I always say, I say, I don't know how to fathom it. That is, you, if even you are in your office, today, this morning, know that God is, will be with you in Jesus' name. The Lord will reach you in everywhere where you are, in the plane. The love of God is there because it's guiding you for you to be protected. There are so many people who have got accidents in that plane. But because of the love of God, the love of God, we cannot measure it. We don't have nowhere to measure the, word, the love of God. In any area where you are, in the ship, he is there. In the vehicle, our God is there. In your kitchen, our God is there. Even in your working place as I started, he is there. He is there to empower us to be anxious. Let us don't be anxious for nothing. Just live your life and know that God is there. In any area you, do, you go, our God is there in Jesus' name. He has already accelerated us. Where we were, God has removed us from there. Forget about those days. Let us talk about now. Some of us, we are living the life, that the life of Satan. There we decided, we said, no, we are going there. We are, we are removing ourselves from this area. What I have been doing as a pagan, what I have been doing even when I said I'm going to the church, the things that I have been doing, today I have decided to remove them. We, come in the, we came in this church and said we want to be baptized. They baptized you. Then after the baptism, you are here today. You are here today. You have been exhilarated in Jesus' name. You've got the divine power. You are a complete change person. A woman and a man of God. So that word, they said that woman, that man who is going to cross purpose church, who is going to whatever, the, all the churches here, divine this, that, and other churches, that man, look at, look at her. The life he's living, is it not disgraceful? If you've already changed, change for the better. Change that God will know that you are already changed in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit makes us different, which we all know from people, from people outside there. He makes us different. He makes us a peculiar people. We are different, my brothers and sisters. You don't know yourself. If you know yourself, you will know that we are different. Think of when you call God. Think of when you are sick, you call God, God answers you. Think of when your child has problem, you call God. Think this morning with the women, when we are pregnant, we go to the labor there. People are dying there. People are operated, but we can go through. It's only God that can do it for you and me. We are peculiar people. We are special people. People see us in that way. And the Holy Spirit is the one that is doing that for us. He endowed us with grace to be different and special one so that the grace God has given us so that we'll be different. The difference there is we are ashamed of doing what the other people are doing outside there, those who did not go to church. Because if you, you are coming in, in, inside the church or any other church, I cannot just say uh, 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 cross purpose church, you are going to church. Then you decided to follow those people doing the same thing. Why are you coming? Why are you coming, wasting the time, early in the morning, you have to get your clothes, you have to iron, you have to, oh, especially to be made. It's a body. We are here. Paul prayed for us that God will give us that strength. God will be in us. What are we waiting? The Holy Spirit makes us to be different in Jesus' name. This makes the man of the world want to know the source of our, our strength. The people who are there, they want to know the source of our strength. They want to know us. They want to know you, how, how this woman is living. Look at this woman who came from Africa yesterday. He has two children. He has a nice car. He has a job. All that, it is because you are following God. Because you are a child of God. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. Ask 
and it shall be given. He is not a liar. If you already changed, you already accelerated. Please don't go behind again in Jesus' name. God has done a great job. The Holy Spirit is looking after you. The people there, they want to know the source of our strength. If we look low upon it, it will be a disgrace to us in Jesus' name. For Jesus to do well in our hearts is not a common prayer. That man was praying. Paul was praying for you and me. It's not just too common. You know, for Jesus to come in you, it's not you come in that careless way. He said, Jesus, do it in me. Come in. No, 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 no. You have to be somebody who walks straight. Somebody who looks sober. In Jesus' name. Paul wants us to be focused. This morning, Paul wants us to be focused. There is no one in this world that cannot change. If Paul changes, what about you? That man who was the, the most a, a wicked man, he, when you read this book of Ephesians, you will know he wants us to be focused, to press forward to, 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 towards the calling of Christ. That's what Paul wants you and me this morning. We are seeing ourselves. When you do this thing, you will see yourself as you are at All you are thinking is about God. All you are thinking is about the work of God. All you are thinking is about bringing people in the house of God. All you are thinking is what? I, have I err? Oh God, please don't write this sin for me. But today, what are we thinking? I'm not going to the church. I'm going to work tomorrow because I have to send $10,000 for my house they are building for me. That's the most important thing we are thinking today. I have a car that I have seen. I don't know the names of the cars. The one who are driving, they know. But that car is 35,000. I will walk towards that. Are you not walking uh, towards uh, uh, your salvation so that you're free? That thing that is in you, I pray this morning that God will remove it from you in Jesus' name. As how Paul was praying for, this, for, 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 the, uh, for the church in Ephesus, praying for these Gentiles, he was praying for we. That's why as I started, I said we, we remove we removed the church in Ephesus. But we are, Paul is talking to us this morning. We see ourselves as accelerate, accelerating towards the mark of our calling. You will grow if you want to grow in Jesus' name. If you want to be a doctor, are you not working towards being a doctor? If you want to be a teacher in this country, are you not reading towards being a teacher? You want to do even the, 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 the disability. You will go for six months to get the certificate. If you want to be that child, that child, that real child of God, you have to press forward towards the mark of the high calling. You have to press. You keep on pressing. At times, what you used to do, when you said this thing, I will not do it again. The other day you went and do it. There is no giant person in this world. Don't worry. Just go back to your room and pray, God. I said I don't want to do this thing again because it is, it, 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 it is satanic. Lord, remove it from me in Jesus' name. If you mean it, God will remove you from there. In the name of Jesus. God will remove you in Jesus' name. It is not your own power, but by the power of God in the name of Jesus. I pray that this prayer of Paul help us uh, 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 to navigate our, our differences in our lives, in this church, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you have Christ who dwells in your heart that wants you to, to uh, the common world, that wants that want you to be lifted up, you have Christ. He is in you. He wants you to be lifted up in the things of God. You have that Christ. Please, don't, don't feel people are laughing at you. No. You are in the right place in Jesus' name. You are in the right place. This world cannot judge you. 
This world cannot judge you. But our Jesus, the first instant when you go, Jesus will accept you by being a Christian before ever you go to the judgment in Jesus' name. Be happy with it in the name of Jesus. Walk that God will know that you are walking. May the Lord open our hearts and minds to receive him in our hearts in Jesus' name. To make us firm, to make us firm in our life wherever we go. Not to be tossed. You know, what, uh, I don't know if you know what, I, what, what I'm saying. There are people who just, they are, today they are here, tomorrow they will be there. The next day they are there. All around, they don't know the right church to go. They don't know the right person to confide with. They don't know the right prayer to hold on. They are just there and there. It means you haven't decided your mind to be that real Christian. Today, this morning, know that the area where we were, God remove us from there and we receive the growth, that divine growth. We have received it. So you are a peculiar person, a special youth in Jesus' name. Amen. Youth, you are special. Let no uh, friend convince you, you are special as you are seated here in Jesus' name. You are special in the name of Jesus. We always pray for you. Let us be firm, as I was saying, in his word, not to be tossed here and there, and, and, and today you go there, tomorrow you come here. Be steady. If you are in the word of God, don't see it that you are wasting your time. May the Lord God bless you this morning. Wherever you are, even those who are not here today, those online, may God bless you that you make a decision of standing in the word of God. You won't be toasted every day you are there and here. And know that you are a peculiar person. God has blessed you by removing you from where you were. Bringing you to the house of God. Bringing you that you can serve God. Bringing you to the body of Christ. In Jesus' name. And who can do that? It is only our God. Our God who gave us Jesus. For us to be saved. For us to be able to stand before God and say, God... This is what I want. It is only the death of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom our Father sacrificed for you and me. May God bless you this morning in Jesus Christ's name.